But she snuck in. She came in. Hey, Robin. Good. Thank you. Hi, Andy. Hey, Robin. Happy New Year to both of you. To all yeah, of you. Happy New Year. Happy New Year, Robin. Feels like that was forever ago already. Right? I know. It's the longest month ever in January <laughs> <laughs> so far. All right. So we're live now. It is 6.30 p.m. according to my clock, Mr. Chair. Perfect. Oh, I, just to, I just have to get the record um, record going here, Killers. One sec. There we go. Excellent. So call to order for the Town of Empire Ad Hoc Committee for Council Remuneration. It is Wednesday, January 15th, or 5th. Feels like the 15th, but it's the 5th, uh, 2022. It's 6.30 p.m. So we'll start with a roll call. Citizen member Daryl O'Shaughnessy. Citizen member Andy Tamis. Yep. Chair Cooper. Present. Excellent. So we'll open with a uh, land acknowledgement. So I'd like to begin by acknowledging that the land on which we work and gather is the traditional unceded territory of the Anishinaabe people. This Algonquin nation has lived on this land for thousands of years, long before the arrival of European settlers. And we are grateful to have the opportunity to be present in this territory. Miigwech. Perfect. So we'll move forward with the adoption of the agenda. So we will just need a mover and a seconder on that to oh, I'll second. second. Sorry, Kayla. Okay, no problem, Daryl and then Andy. Be resolved that the agenda for the Council Remuneration Ad Hoc Committee meeting of Wednesday, January 5th, 2022 be adopted. Perfect. So we had Daryl as our mover and Andy as our seconder. Excellent. Um, moving on from there, the adoption of the minutes of the previous meeting. Sorry, Chair, I just need all in favor. All in favor. All in favor. Perfect. I'm good here. Excellent. We're, we're a very agreeable bunch here. <laughs> <laughs> the August 25th, 2021 Council Remuneration Ad Hoc Committee meeting be adopted. Excellent. And a mover for that? I'll move it. Andy has moved it and Daryl has seconded. Excellent. And we'll move past. We have no awards, delegations, presentations, matters, matters tabled, moving straight to new business. So the new business is council remuneration discussion. Excellent. Yep. Mm -hmm. So our, sorry, go ahead, Robin. I, I was just going to say, um, if maybe uh, I can start, start off by saying thank you to the committee members for giving us a chance tonight to, uh, to meet with, with you one more time. I, I know you've met several times over the year and a lot of effort and work into your, uh, into your, into your mandate so far. And we uh, received the copy of the presentation from, uh, from the chair on, I think it was on December 7th. And I say that because I, I know the very next day we were putting out the council agenda for the last meeting of the year on December 13th, um, which would have made uh, it very difficult for staff to get a really good chance to, to look over your presentation before um, before it got into the package, and so when we when we saw the breadth of it and we wanted a chance to look at it, we appreciated um, your your uh, agreement to let us hold off on on putting it forward on the thirteenth. It was a very busy meeting uh, as well for council as the last one of the year. There was a lot on it, and we just saw the value of waiting till the new year um, because this the decisions of the council um, as a result of your recommendations won't take. Uh, effect until the new council comes in after November. We have a little bit of time to um, to make sure that uh, council gets a chance to really um, uh, understand your recommendations before they make a decision. So we thought it was prudent to to hold off on the December thirteenth meeting and give us a chance to really look at your presentation and provide some feedback. And then again, our thoughts were, you know, the easiest way to speak to you all is to just hold a meeting rather than try and formulate some comments and notes back and forth. So again, appreciate your time tonight for, for one more meeting to, uh, to give us a chance to provide a little bit of feedback. Uh, we've been through it uh, from a staff perspective, and I think we just have a couple of comments. And I think Jennifer's suggestion was if we could just sort of walk away through it and make a few comments as we go through, then that might just um, be the easiest way to, to comment, if that's fair. Yeah, that's perfect. That's excellent. I think that makes uh, makes good sense. And also giving time to think about it rather than trying to cram it into the end of your meeting makes good sense. Mm -hmm. uh, because of the time, there's there's a it's not it's not a rush deadline uh, item. We have some some flex in time, so that makes good sense. I agree, I agree Robin. Thank you. Perfect. 
yeah, doing anything around Christmas time too. I think we all had hectic enough schedules that uh, it was a very busy time. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Excellent. So do we want to, Jennifer, did you want to bring up the presentation? We'll just go through it page by page. Is that the best, uh, best way to do it? Absolutely. I can uh, share my screen here. Just give me one moment. Now, does that work? Yep. yep. Absolutely. Yep. yep. That works. Okay. Um, let's see if I can get it so it goes kind of more full screen here. Is that better? Yeah, that's perfect. That's yeah. great. Okay, great. So we'll just walk. I'll just kind of get through the first couple here, which were a little more uh, formal. So uh, in the background, um, it's great you put the background here. That's nice. Um, you know what I mean? I just wanted to highlight here. Uh, it's great that you referenced the bylaw. Um, you know, it's being a bylaw to set the remuneration um, and that it was really stipulates that market review for the council compensation be done every four years. So that's great. Great. Um, okay, here we go. Sorry, my my picture of everyone kind of blocks the screen here. Just one sec. For me, okay. Um, so a little bit more background. Um, I just uh, you know, did anyone have any comments on these parts type thing? I think this was just all background. Again. Okay, so guiding principles. So here you had some comments about the elected officials should be fairly and fully compensated for the work they do and the expenses um, they incur while conducting town of Armpar business. They re receive compensation that is competitive um, in today's market um, and be um, supported in pursuing continuous development opportunities that benefit um, the town. Um, I wanted to touch base just with um, a quick kind of comment um, on this one is um, you guys remember from the AMO report, there was a number of different factors usually that go into consideration that guide um, developing, you know what I mean, a council compensation review. Um, and if you remember for smaller municipalities, almost over 80% of them um, used that um, market comparison to other municipal um, organizations, um, kind of as the one of the guiding factors. And also I can see your second bullet here, you know what I mean? That compensation is competitive in the market. That was also one of the factors that are considered. Um, so I just wanted to kind of highlight that part there um, about the, the market review piece. Um, Robin, did you have any, Maureen, have anything else on this one? No, I think that's okay. Yeah. I, I, think, I think our issue competitive in today's market um, I think it goes beyond uh, comparison with what other municipalities are dealing with or how they're doing their business. It's uh, today's market for personnel, uh, for caliber of the personnel that we're interested in, in seeing in the town's administration. So um, that's, that's the, uh, our committee in terms of market. That's kind of what we were talking about. If, I'm, if, I, if I read that right, Chris, what do you think? Yeah, I mean, the whole market review, the, the toughest part, just in summary um, for us, was the, the report did cite um, market analysis with the uh, the other neighboring markets. It also did point out that inherent flaw that, um, you know, it's almost like a feedback loop where you, you are looking at, everyone's looking at what everyone else is doing and you keep getting the same thing. Uh, so our concern, I, I know we're going to, we can talk about it later on in there is just that uh, there's very little room for innovation in the process. Um, but definitely that's later on in the, in the presentation. Great. So here um, it speaks to um, um, our first growth rate, along with rising inflation, makes the remuneration recommendation based on population um, very difficult. Um, and then you talk here about um, the duties of elected officials, um, the demands with increase in population, and that um, right now that you're, the strong feeling that the committee has on elected officials not receiving middle of the pack compensation, given the challenges of growing community, um, and the established practice of looking at only other um, neighboring municipalities just kind of what you just said, Chris, of the, the, the innovation. Um, I just wanted to touch base on um, um, the chart of municipalities that we provided the committee um, for remuneration comparison. It wasn't just based on um, population. 
So we did consider, you know what I mean, other factors that come into play uh, whenever you're doing picking those municipalities that you feel are going to kind of closely, uh, you know, um, be a good comparator for your municipality. It wasn't just a population base, just wanted the committee just to, to know that whenever we had those um, comparisons, you know, it looked at committee uh, ones that communities that were going through similar, you know, a lot of them are going through similar growth um, expansion and growth, just like our empire. Um, a lot of them, you know, some of them also, I'm going to say border a larger city. So they get that pull um, just like arm prior does um, um, to the city um, and things like that. And um, it also considers um, various different factors for to be a comparator. I'll take, for example, whenever um, the municipality, uh, whenever we hire consultants who come in and do our, our pay equity for uh, at a staff level, um, they also formulate a listing of comparable municipalities based on those factors. They look at ones that have, I'm going to say, like a consider con, um, a comparable org chart design. Um, so in this case, for council, it'd be looking at ones that have a similar setup of council, um, you know, and looking at, once again, similar size, similar challenges within the municipality. So um, I just wanted to make sure that com the, the committee knew that the listing of municipalities that um, we provided on that list for comparison of the market review uh, wasn't just based on population. There was a lot of other factors that kind of were considered in that. And also, I wanted to let the committee know that, you know, kind of when you get to some of your other slides, you kind of focus in on um, Carlton Place, um, you know, as being kind of that best comparator. Um, if you want municipal data on other municipalities, like if you feel that you want to look at other ones that would be more comparable to Ampara, by all means, if you ask us, we can provide that, try and get you that, um, that review data. I almost was a little worried, um, got the feeling that maybe you wanted to see some comparators maybe for some other municipalities in there. Because you um, and if you do, by all means, just ask, and we can help you get get any additional data that you need to do um, to do that market review. For sure, yeah. We we had looked at uh, Carlton Place specifically. It did have the population piece was kind of where we figure our prior is. Like we don't have the latest census data, so it made it very difficult to tell exactly where we were. Um, we had picked Carlton Place just kind of the size of the the community itself, also the duties of the composition of council and the duties um, that they had. They had, if I don't have the chart in front of me, unfortunately, right now, uh, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe their council had more meetings than arm priors does. However, when we considered um, like special meetings of council and uh, for example, the library board, things like that kind of put up arm priors numbers beyond just those base numbers of meetings per year that we had. Um, so just in terms of our local Eastern Ontario municipality, um, we felt that Car Carlton Place was the closest in, in a multitude of different factors. And the pay, the, the pay was higher in Carlton Place, um, but not significantly not significantly higher. Absolutely. And um, um, like you said, you did a comparison, you, look, you looked at number of meetings too, and that's also a factor, absolutely a comparison. Um, other things that we would have looked at um, when kind of picking comparable municipalities would also been like, you know, um, is it a lower tier that reports up to an upper tier? You know what I mean? And what roles um, and things like that does that council play uh, for the portfolio um, that's under them for creating policy for the municipality and things like that. So, um, so yeah. Um, Robin, Marine, any? That's good. Further. Oh, I just wanted to, sorry, I wanted to add one more point, Chris, there, for your point at the bottom there about it becoming a bit of a, a feedback loop. Um, you know, um, I understand the committee's concerns. Uh, when you look at the AMO report, it's it's interesting to see the, the high level of municipalities that, I think it was 86% that they do conduct um, their compensation reviews um, based on the municipal uh, comparisons. <laughs> Um, so this one just has some of the complications that you touched base on. Um. The biggest one in there that we had seen was that uh, 
the discussion of the barriers to attracting a younger and more diverse candidates. And this is something that last time when I sat on the committee, we faced the same uh, dilemma because we had gone with the same, the exact same report we had. Um, it was a 2016 report. So we, we had really talked about that. How do we attract more diverse candidates um, because the report really spoke to that. That's one big challenge is that the job is increasing, but we seem to be having the same demographic of candidate that keeps coming. So that really we focused in on that issue that they had cited and uh, thought like, how do we work to increase the diversity um, of candidates for the, for the roles? And we spent a lot of time with that question. Absolutely, we did. We really did. Yep. Uh, and and one of the issues was compensation. Who can afford to be on council? Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. They. So, and uh, and that's uh, and that was one of the issues that we grappled with. Yeah, and the the specific thing that they talked about in there in attracting like even a younger um, a younger candidate was in attracting someone from the private sector into municipal politics is that they're in the prime age of their earning potential. Um, so there's a great reluctance to assume a, essentially a, a part-time municipal role um, and take away from that prime earning potential year of their of their career. So that was a huge concern. And like Daryl said, we did we really talked a lot about this, um, specifically this part in uh, in our goal of really attracting more diverse base for, for municipal politics here. It's a huge problem, obviously, for most municipalities, I think, in Ontario, based on that report. And certainly, you know, I'm sure many are grappling with how how do you attract, you know, different different demographics, different uh, age groups, that kind of thing. And, and, you know, compensation is probably one of the, the key factors. I don't know what else uh, what else there is that we can do be doing to influence the other people to, uh, to apply. But at any rate, you, you probably hit the nail on the head that uh, a lot of municipalities are grappling. Perfect. And I just want to stress that this is not a slight against anyone that is serving or has served. Um, yeah, we were not trying to throw shade at anyone. We just wanted to see that diversity increase. Of course, yeah. Yep. I think in my experience as well, um, having sat on council for many years, um, <laughs> It is the, um, the members of the public who really do have and feel uh, a civic responsibility are the ones that do come forward, um, irregardless of compensation. Um, and because they, they love the town and they have a civic responsibility, you will see it very often where um, it, it, it very often is the same people that run for everything, right? Mm -hmm. You know, I liken it to coaches that that coach things that have a passion for something. So in my experience, it's always been that that uh, the members of council that are running do have a great civic responsibility and feel um, that they can assist the town in that manner. Sure. And that's a huge part is even those are the people that are getting involved. The one thing that scared me in the report um, they talked about, and this is back in 2016, they talked about how uh, social media accessibility and everything for our municipally elected officials is increasing the breadth and scope of their job even more because they're now accessible. It's not like you had to wait till you could call someone or run into them on the street. If you have a problem at 1130 at night, you can send them an email, you can send them a, a DM on social media and expect an answer within an hour. Um, so that's what kind of made us nervous is that, you know, the, the role itself traditionally has been in many ways, it was an unpaid role for, for a lot of municipalities. And now it's really increasing in, uh, in just what the role itself is. I agree with you. I think over the years, the the political role has, has, has changed a lot. You know what I mean? And uh, um, you know what I mean? When we're talking here, compensation models, they probably haven't changed a lot. <laughs> uh, you know what I mean? Over those same, over those same time periods, um, you know what I mean? Uh, for compensation models, you know what I mean? Like I, I feel here where there's about two little different things. One is your model, you know, is 
you know, looking at, as you had in your guiding principles, compensating, you know, members of council for the role that they're performing, you know, and then here it's a bit where you're looking at compensation being, you know, is it a um, attraction factor to get a more diverse, um, you know what I mean, uh, candidates, you know what I mean, applying for a council position. I think maybe they're kind of two different, um, you know, two what different mean? Field. we almost should. Factors. We almost should consider maybe then uh, changing our guiding principles to add that 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 diversification of the council portfolio is really a guiding principle in our uh, in our decision making. Would you feel that's a, a good addition? Yep. I know. I think separating them is is, is key. Just kind of what you're saying, like maybe we're like if, if you guys had as your committee, you know what I mean? Like you guys have your compensation review. And then I saw at the end you have some additional recommendations. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Um, you know what I mean? is one part of the compensation review and then is one an additional recommendation maybe um type of a thing or how you're saying it adding it as a as as a considerations that were were included i think however the committee decides they want to go with that that's okay i don't really yeah. care how it's how it's handled just as long as the principle is clear and we mm -hmm. made our decisions with that in the background of, of our thinking daryl i saw your mouth move there i couldn't yeah, I couldn't hear you. Is your mic on? Did you, uh, had you added something to that? I just saw you say something, but I didn't hear anything. No, no, I didn't. No. Okay, my apologies, sir. Go ahead, Chris. Perfect. No, that's good. I'm used to saying, turn on your mic uh, 800 times a day now. So I, I'm very sensitive to that. <laughs> okay, so next slide. I'm just reading here. Uh, maybe Chris, do you want to walk us a little bit through this one? Absolutely. So um, this was kind of the big thing in our presentation was uh, the full-time mayor compensation recommendation. I just want to just be clear that our recommendation isn't that the position is made full-time, it's that it's compensated full-time because we felt very strongly as a committee that the, the position of mayor and indeed probably the position of many councillors, but we're focusing on the mayor as the head of council um, is already a full-time job. And our recommendation is that it is compensated as such. One of our guiding principles was to make sure that everyone's fairly compensated for their time. So we, we felt very strongly that the mayor's position um, should be compensated on a, on a full-time basis. Um, and I'll just go through this. So the AMCTO report did outline some flaws in the nature of our current compensation structure and review process. Um, so we felt that making the mayor a position on a full-time salary would respond to this by providing realistic full-time compensation for a job we felt was already full-time and all but remuneration. Uh, so this aligns to our guiding principle that elected officials should be fully compensated for the work they do. Uh, we felt that this, and Jennifer, this would go tie back to that guiding principle if we put it in there of opening the position to a wider demographic. So attracting candidates, and we really felt that otherwise can't afford to be the mayor. So it encourages diverse representation. Um, we just felt that it's not, it's not a good thing for uh, our town. If only the people that can afford to be mayor are in there, it doesn't represent, it doesn't represent fairly our, our town itself. So we wanted to offer full-time official municipal representation, representation to pursue socioeconomic development opportunities. There's no question that the opportunities emerging from uh, the pandemic are going to be key and having someone full-time on the job would allow them to fully, uh, fully pursue them. Uh, it also positions our empire as a municipal leader instead of a follower. We said the practice of simply reviewing neighboring markets, we said before, leaves very little room for innovation. Um, there is, we acknowledge, only a very low percentage of municipalities our size that have a full-time head of council. That being said, the precedent has been set that a municipality our size could have a full-time head of council. And I know we tried to find who that municipality was. Um, again, we'd love to know kind of who it is and get some more information from them. Um, they, but we acknowledge that it it has been set as a precedent that this happened. Um, and we feel that Arm Prior would be better for having our mayor as a full-time uh, position here in town. If I could add on that, uh, Chris, I think you've mm -hmm. done a good job there. But um, it's, it's, it's almost like a 24-7 job. Uh, I was a social worker at one point in a small northern community, and there was no downtime. You never knew when someone was going to call you. 
Like you, the only way to get a downtime is to leave town and go on holiday somewhere else and turn your phone off. Uh, and so I think we have to recognize that that's one of the factors in a job like a mayor's. Mm -hmm. I just make a comment. Absolutely. Mr. Chair, um, I think full time is a is a funny term and part time because really these aren't sa um, salary hourly positions, they're salary positions, right? Um, so we don't often think about how much time is being put in to the job, which you're, you're absolutely right. It, it can be very full time considered, considering how much time a, a mayor can put into, you know, preparation and meetings with, uh, with other officials and developers and that kind of thing that often the other council members may not be involved in, uh, you're right, phone calls to the mayor are probably uh, double what they are to any other councillor because as the figurehead of council is the most um, most accessible in, in most people's minds as far as you know who to call when you have a question. Because we don't have ward system here, the rest of the councillors that are at large, people probably think, let's go to the top and, and uh, get, our, get our concerns addressed by the mayor. So I'm sure uh, the mayor probably received, like I said, quite quite a few more calls than the rest. Um, but you know, in, the, in Ma Maureen's experience and mine too, we've had mayors who have full time jobs, part time jobs, or retired, and all of them, uh, you know, have their own level of how much commitment they they put into their role here. So, you know, again, it's that that term full time always um, strikes me as is a bit funny because you know certainly it's a full time job as as uh, as we see that and and. Andy, your, your comment is so true. There's that new legislation that Ontario is coming out with about the right to disconnect for employees, you know, at the end of the day to not be getting those calls at midnight, but, but they're going to come anyway, right? And, and a councillor and a mayor can't just turn off their phone necessarily um, and, uh, and expect that they, they won't be uh, called at any time by their residents because they're, they're going to want representation 24-7. So, I mean, it just... That's my only comment, really, is just that term full-time always uh, strikes me as a little, little odd because people kind of equate that with a salary, with an hourly rate versus a salary. And what we're talking about here is a salaried position like the council position. So anyway. I think that the full-time, like calling it the full-time is a more of a term that people like town or taxpayers and everyone can appreciate um, for workload. It also it's almost like marketing for the town where if we say that, you know, we are a smaller town, but we have put our money where our mouth is. We invested in the top of our leadership team and uh, we are compensating them. This is their job. Their job isn't, they're not working at another business all the time. Our mayor works as our mayor and yeah. our mayor is there all the time for our people. Um, so yeah. it, it's, Andy told me not to call it marketing because it's not marketing. Um, <laughs> Maybe it is a little bit of marketing too, um, in having our, our mayor full time compensation. You're right, it is a salaried position. So essentially, we're recommending a salary boost from um, what it currently is to, to a more palatable one for someone seeking uh, equivalent full time employment. Um, but I think calling it a full time, it really it speaks. It speaks to people on a level that they understand. They understand what a full-time job is. If our mayor is making what would be equivalent to a part-time job, well, then the people that would apply for that job now say, "I can't afford to. I can't afford to do that job. I'm going to have to have two or three other jobs to do it." So uh, definitely, yeah. I don't know what else to say on there. I guess uh, the other thing I just wanted to say, Robin, is that, and we did our homework here as well. We not only talked to our mayor, but we talked to previous mayors uh, uh, to see what the job actually entailed. Excellent. So, um, I think we uh, have a good feel, I believe, in what the mayor duties or responsibilities are. And marketing and sales is a big one, no matter how you cut it, right? Right. Yeah, I appreciate anyway, that. Just a comment, uh, Robin. Yeah, no, I appreciate that. Very good. Okay, it, it, there may be a question of terminology problem here. Um, if, if we want to, to what, what we're interested in is recognizing that this is, this is not a part-time job. Uh, it, it's a job that takes the time and that the town requires. Uh, and so if we use another term for full-time, like a full-time equivalent or some other way of, of, uh, of stating it, to uh, have it more accurately reflect the situation. 
the the basic concept uh, is that what we're thinking is that this is this this is a, a, a full time job. And people understand that, Andy. I think, and I think keeping it at full, you know, just using the terminology here, is uh, is good enough. In yeah, my it's opinion. for optics. I hit for optics alone. People understand what it is, yeah. right? Yeah. 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 Um, and I did look at the AML report for you. I know you wanted to find out who was that 2%. Uh, they don't give a listing um, of which municipalities make up which of the percentages. So uh, I'm sorry, but I couldn't find that, find that out for you. And any of the Eastern Ontario municipalities that we looked at in the compensation review, it wasn't any of them either. So I don't quite know who, who that, I know you wanted to know which one it was, but I, I'm, I'm not aware of which yep. municipality that is right now. <laughs> So remuneration review, Chris, is this just listing kind of the different pieces you guys looked at? Yeah, this is definitely what we we looked at for um, for as part of our review. So the market review was compo composed of salaries, the expenses, and the benefits. Uh, and then there is a training and development piece that we were asked to look at as well, and that included per diems, policies, uh, as it related to council conferences, training and functions, and the council expense policy. So there are some recommendations in there that staff had made for us to discuss, so we discussed it and uh, came up with our recommendation in the following pages. Okay. Um, so here, uh, the general wages are adjusted in accordance of uh, COLA. Um, so are you, I wanted, I had a comment on that one, sorry if I can go back. Mm -hmm. So are you recommending that um, the COLA increase continue for the next four years? Absolutely, yeah. yeah and okay. the uh, the salary that we had recommended as well, we didn't have that. I don't think you have the COLA figure yet. Um, I, I, we didn't have an adjusted figure for that uh, as well, but it would be each year sequentially uh, having COLA increased. Okay, so uh, we did pass um, the collective bargaining agreement for the next four years with the union. We did that, was it October, Robin? Yeah. Um, and I know for um, for staffing and what uh, past practice has been, um, has been to use the same percentage um, uh, increases that were attached to the CBA uh, was what was used as COLA for, um, for council as well. So I'm not sure if you wanted to I like add a, if that's what you're looking at for COLA or are you looking at more like a CPI from like a stats can type thing? It would just be the COLA increase the percentage there that you're, the you're using because that's the same practice that you use with staff right now. Okay. Yeah. Just for clarity, it might be good to maybe if you could throw a bullet on there just saying that's what um, the recommendation is that you want to keep the same um, using the same CBA or the same um, percentage from the uh, agreement on the, from the agreement. Okay, perfect. Yep. That's great. I'll, okay. uh, it, uh, well, I'll email you and we can get the actual wording for that then. Okay, great. Perfect. Clarify that one. Okay, so you had this in yellow. So is that something, is it just highlighting um, the recommendation or did you have a question for us on it? Uh, no, we had just put it okay. in there for the recommendation just to kind of highlight that as their, that's kind of the meat and potatoes of the entire presentation. Okay. <laughs> I wasn't sure because I know in another one you had a question and it was highlighted for us. So I just wasn't sure if this was also um, your, if you had a question for it um, type thing as well. Um, where am I here? I did have a question about, um, so you're, from the AMCTO report, the average salary, when I was looking at average salaries in the report, what did I have? I saw a different number listed, and I just wanted to make sure we were talking the same numbers. Oh, okay. Um, where did my thing go? Because um, they had broke it down like by, you know, like Southern Ontario, Eastern Ontario, and that type of a thing. So I just wanted to make sure that our, um, yeah, so the head of Ontario, um, the head of council Eastern Ontario salary, um, it was showing um, an average for populations 5,000 to 9,999. And I didn't know if you guys wanted to use that because, or if you're saying you think our population is going to pass that 10,000 mark and you wanted to go to the other one. The funny yeah. thing is in that report, the 5,000 to 9,999 salary was higher than the 10,000 to 25,000 average salary, oh. which is really, which is really strange. Um, so the average, 
um, head of council salary for Eastern Ontario, it was 43,054. And yep. then from the 10,000 population to 25,000, it actually dropped to 34,429. Wow. Okay. We, yes. we may have looked only at the 10,000 number then. That's because we figured um, pretty strongly when the census comes out, it's going to be above 10,000. Yeah. Uh, so I just wanted to highlight that for you guys, the numbers that have come from that report. They have a, it broken down in a couple of different ways. Okay. Um, uh, for those values in the back of the, the AMA report. Okay, we're going to have to go back and we'll look, we'll definitely review that. I pulled, sorry, I made a little note of my thing here. I pulled that from page 22. Okay. I just wanted to make sure that we're, um, uh, just for your consistency for numbers. Absolutely. So that's page two, average head of council, uh, average head and member of council honorarium or salary by population size. Yeah, like it went by honorariums and then it had the ones that go by salaries. So I went salary Eastern Ontario. And do you see mm -hmm. it there? I wonder. Yeah, I see it there. 5,000 to 9,999 is 43,054. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And then it drops by $10,000 if you go down to 10,024. Yeah, yeah. So it's a bit of a, and once again, when you look at the number of municipalities they use in the survey, like I think it for in that category range of 5,000, 9,000, it was only 27 municipalities. So, you know, you have to take some of the data and a grain of salt, you know what I mean? Like for the, for some of those numbers, but. Yeah. Oh, I think I see yeah. where we had gotten that number from. We got it from the province wide at 10 to 24,000. Oh, oh, okay. Okay. I was driving down deeper a little bit, right? Just the Eastern Ontario. Maybe that's what it was. Cause I couldn't find the 31. So that was your province wide. Okay. Yeah. We looked at province. Okay. That's where it is. And then Eastern Ontario is 34. So at the uh, five to nine, nine, nine would be 43 to, oh, okay. I see that. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then I just wanted to highlight here, um, just from a methodology perspective. So like, so here, um, council, you're aligning it with Carlton Place, which is a little bit more of the market review methodology, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? Uh, for the lining up and saying, instead of coming in where Armpro is currently sitting kind of third in that group of eight to 10 municipalities, you're saying, okay, no, let's bring them to the front of the pack, which I believe was the Carlton Place. Yeah, it was um, slightly behind the Petawawa one. We felt that Petawawa was a different market. Um, so Carlton Place was our nearest comp. Slightly under there, yes. Uh, yes, you're correct. Um, and then for the the mayor, the mayor one here. Um, so I think here you're taking um, the range, and then you're kind of just du doubling it from like a time perspective. Absolutely, yeah. We went from that as traditionally it's been seen as and compensated as kind of a part time. So we effectively doubled that uh, that salary of thirty one seven twenty one to bring it to sixty three four forty two before applying any cost of living increase if applicable. Yeah, I think that kind of gets into the, what Robin was saying before versus like, it's not hourly. So, you know, the part-time versus uh, versus the full-time, you know, a lot of those mayors who are making that um, total value of like, for example, this 43054, you know what I mean? Are they doing, you know, if you don't look at it from an hourly perspective, you know what I mean? Like for their role type of thing. Mm -hmm. So anyways, just a factor to consider when, um, when you're, just wanting to pull what numbers from the charts from the AMO there for okay where it just how we extrapolate the data if we're doubling yeah. it based on hours I like our yeah. goal really and yeah. we discussed too what's a palatable like what's a livable wage um for a mid-market yeah. manager here in Armprior and we we thought dollar if it was an hourly rate around a thirty dollar an hour rate um we felt was pretty fair um for a manager position here in our and honestly it's probably pretty low for what a, a manager would make um in private industry i realized we're not private however we thought that that 30 dollar an hour goal and this yeah. kind of supported where we were thinking i think that's an important info chris though like you guys are making those decisions based on this to say you want it to be a living wage like i think that would be a good point to be saying you know what i mean with it is that's the the theory behind your decision making you know what i mean is to um to for that you know what i mean because uh, here you talk about just doubling it and pulling the number from AMO, but what your real goal is, is you're trying to make it a living wage, right? Okay. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. That's a good comment, Jennifer. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because, yeah, when we look at it from the lens of it's not strictly part-time, I know in, in elections, or I don't know if it's the Elections Act. No, it's not the Elections Act. Anyhow, there's no stipulation that the the position of mayor is either full-time or part-time or, or municipal councillors are full-time or part-time. And maybe that's part of it that has to be put in there too, is um, we define as a town 
is the position considered full time? Is it considered part time? Because that could structure our or that could influence our compensation, how we view the responsibilities of our municipal uh, and municipally elected officials. If we expect it to be considered a full time job with this many hours, that that definitely plays a role. I think it just I think it just explains your decision making and your methodology behind how you came to your your conclusions a little bit better because someone could look at just this yellow part here and say okay well 63 now they're off the grid of municipal comparators do you know what I mean because uh, type of a thing whereas if you talk about your reasoning for making it a living wage and things like that then it shows how you came to those those conclusions that's excellent okay that's a very good point thank you yeah, I, I agree that's an excellent point the, uh, I think they putting it in Comparing it to a middle level management position uh, in some other kind of field of work uh, mm -hmm. to make it comparable and to make it a living uh, wage so the person can pay their bills. I think that's important. Perfect. And again, it's based on duties and responsibilities as well, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Right. So I'm just making a note. Excellent. Okay. Thank you. Um, so expense policies, um, so you recommend maintaining um, kind of, I, I don't think there was any changes there. There, there are no changes. Think? No, this is maintaining. And we looked at uh, the internet. We think that's fair because their internet costs aren't exclusively being used for their, their role. So um, that and the cell phone costs at 50 and 35 were totally, totally fine. Mileage, the laptop being provided or a tablet, uh, healthcare sending account drug and healthcare benefits and life insurance coverage and insurance coverage in general was all the same. Okay. Um, so this is what we were asked to consider for the meal allowances to uh, align them in accordance with CRA established rates. We figured that was fine. That's totally fine. That puts it into best practices. Um, our only question that that's where we highlighted right there, does yeah. the bylaw need to change to keep it aligned with CRA rates? Or is it a floating scale that go up as CRA? If they change their rates, does it continue to adjust based on that? I think we would have to amend the, um, the expense policy to put that wording in there to say that it will update with CRA um, established rates. And then you don't have to update it anymore after that because then it'll automatically, uh, then it'll automatically update. Um, but I think the um, original piece, we'll have to make sure that that wording's in the original expense bylaw. Okay, perfect. That's great. Does, does that answer? Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Okay. Oh, sorry, I was looking at the wrong page. Um, and then the other thing that we were looked at, we asked to look at with the recommendation from staff was um, the out of town expenses and per diems. Uh, and those are just the definitions that we received from staff for per diems. I don't think anything, nothing's changed on this part right here. So that's just what we were asked to look at. Yeah, I think so. Um... So here, I think it was just, you know, giving a bit of that definition um, in there when we were looking at that policy for the council, um, the council expense policy is just to give a bit of clarification. So we can, if we're going to open up that expense policy and make amendments, you know what I mean? We can, we can do that. Um, my one kind of nuance with it, I guess, is just saying that the, the recommendation from staff is in your role here, we're not really supposed to, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like be giving you any sort of, you're an independent committee. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So what happened with this policy is we brought it to CSAC right before COVID hit saying here were the, here were kind of the changes that we were looking to make COVID hit. It kind of put everything on hold. Okay. Um, so now we're like, the expenses and the training, it relates to compensation. So we felt it was a fit for your committee uh, to look at um, um, type of thing to be making um, um, kind of those types of recommendations too. So that's kind of how we kind of ended up in the situation a little bit with them. Um, um, it, it's almost like a leftover recommendation from CSAC that has kind of kind of moved over to this committee. To be able to be addressed because it's within our scope. That makes sense. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, if that makes sense. So I guess that, that would be my only um, comment there is it, it was a bit... Um, I think due to COVID that it kind of lined up that way because we would have taken this policy forward um, probably before before now had COVID not hit. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Uh, type thing. So I don't know if you can somehow 
amend that to just touch say base, we touch, touch base on that in there somehow. You know what okay. I mean? Okay. Yeah, absolutely. And just put some wording in there to say uh, this fell within our purveyance due to COVID or. You can even say we brought it to CSAC and then, it, you know, kind of got moved over to this, this committee due to COVID. That's fine. You know what I mean? Or something or. Yep. Uh, just wanted to kind of, I wanted to clarify a bit of the, just how it happened. <laughs> I went in there, no problem. Okay. Uh, this. Okay. <clears throat> okay, I think it's kind of similar with this one, right? Yeah, the training and development part was put in, uh, yeah, that's the same as per DM, so. Um, yeah, so it, these were the no policy time. recommendations. Um, we did say, so uh, the town will budget members council entitled to an equivalent of one three-day conference training or function with the mayor being entitled to an equivalent of two three-day conference training and other functions per calendar year. So that was the addition. We then, we discussed this quite a bit as well. And we said that money is budgeted right now. Um, and we wanted to keep that money with our council. We figured that's investment that we've already budgeted to stay with our council. And instead of it being lost, if a counselor wants to do additional training above and beyond what is in their personal budget, um, that the money that is left within that pool can be allocated for additional training and education. That could be conferences, um, could be a course that they take, but it's not just something you can grab and take. It has to be presented and voted upon by a majority of council. Um, so I had a, just a little comment on this one is with an annual operating budget and the way the budgets, I'm going to say, you know, at the end of the year for audit purposes, we close everything down um, for a budget. So um, at the end of the year, any training money that's not lose, it does actually get closed down and it flows. Um, you know what I mean? Because uh, as a municipality, we have to have a zero um, Oh, at the end of each year, so it's not by term. Year, like we have to close out. We have to close out. So the only time that we actually carry things forward like that is if we put it in a reserve. Um, and normally we wouldn't create a separate reserve for something like a training budget. Um, do you know what I mean? Plus, you wouldn't know till the end of the year how much wasn't going to be taken. Like, what if someone wanted to do a training conference like kind of late in November or something like that? But that money, though, that that doesn't get spent, it does. You know, it remains with the town and the levy anything um, covered by levy and then the next year you know what I mean it does get refreshed in the next year's budget um, so can a, can, I'm sorry to interrupt can a counselor yeah. or a member of council then apply to that levy to, to have some special discretion to go in we just want to make sure that any money yeah. um, any training and we thought it, COVID's a perfect example of it interrupts that entire opportunity to do any of our conference, to do any education. And if a situation like this happens where for whatever reason, um, they're not able to, to go on a course, it's just such a loss that they don't, they don't have that same opportunity later on if it's just not in the budget for them to, to take it later on. So that's kind of where we were thinking. Um, yeah. I know, I know what you're saying. And that makes sense. Um, what I would um what I could suggest is um, something similar to what we do in the budget for staff is we have a separate called special training accreditation line. Okay. And this is, um, you know what I mean? Uh, staff members, if they've already kind of expended their training budget and they want to do some additional training that's a bit above and beyond, or if they're going to get an accreditation or a designation, um, they would apply to the CAO and say, I would like to do this additional training. Uh, it's beyond my original kind of training scope. And Robin, if approves it and it would be funded out of um, the special training and accreditation line. So we have a separate line in budget that I'm going to, that funds, I'm going to say additional um, training. Okay. So, you know, um, I don't see why council members, you know what I mean, couldn't also apply to council. Like you said, you, you would go to council and they would ask to go to some additional training and then they would say, okay, where in budget can we fund that from? I don't see why we couldn't fund that also from the special training and accreditation line. Okay. So I think that would be our recommendation then. We're, I'd have to, Daryl and Andy, would you be comfortable yeah. with amending it for that? Absolutely. I just yeah, I think the aware. idea is you don't want the unused money to disappear. Uh, that someone else can put it to good use, they should have access to it. 
So just knowing that 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 there is the ability to apply for that, would you be comfortable with that as a recommendation, both Daryl and Andy? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. Perfect. I'll amend that then. Okay. Great. And it's good to know. I like we were thinking of a four-year term. We weren't thinking of the the yeah. end of year. And yeah. I know you, you like to have books balanced at the end of the year, so. Yeah, I can approve. Yeah, the I treasure, treasure approve. side of me, I was like, oh no, I have to close that. <laughs> just carry it over. Just put on a yeah. sticky note. That's <laughs> okay. And this was another policy recommendation that was in there, and we felt really strongly. We agreed that within ninety days after attending the conference, a report must be submitted to council for knowledge sharing purposes. That's that's good. That that's a good thing from my experience, and I'm sure. Um, the others can attest that that is pretty much best practice everywhere that you go out and you find information, you bring it back and you share it with your peers. So that's excellent. You know, Chris, as I'm listening to that, I'm thinking that the mayor may go to something mm -hmm. which applies not only to council, it may apply to other members of the municipality as well. Um, so um, is there a way of, because he may go to something which would uh, deal with, uh, I don't know, public works. Um, and uh, that the public works people should be should receive the benefit of that. So uh, if you limit it to council, uh, then um, it, it rules out possible other beneficiaries uh, of that experience. That's a great, yeah, that's a great point. I like that. I think if they included the CAO, then the CEO could distribute it out to, uh, you know what I mean, to staff as well. <laughs> No, that's a good point. Say he went to a recreation thing about waterfront master plan mm -hmm. things. You definitely want everyone to know about that. But yeah, that's a we can put that verb. Would you like that verbiage in there, Jennifer? That said, does council and CAO for knowledge sharing purposes? Absolutely, uh, I, I yeah. think so. And yeah. so from the CEO, then that spills over into the rest of the administration. Yeah, inform information can be shared in tons of different ways nowadays. You know what I mean? Like it could even go through the info package at council, if, depending on the format and all kinds of things. So there's definitely lots of ways to get the info out there for sure. Perfect. I'm sure you find that too, Robin, that stuff that comes Absolutely. back, staff consumes as well. So that's good. Absolutely. Okay. Good point, Andy. I like that. Um, and then these are just our additional recommendations. Uh, one was really greater community outreach leading up to the next election. Um, so really outlining the role of council. And this, we'd leave this to the, the marketing, Lindsay's successor, um, to be able to put it out there, really do some outreach campaigns to outline what is being a councillor like, what are your duties, how does it impact your town? Um, and that can be through social media, that can be through events. Um, we also said appointing youth ambassadors. I know this was part of last time and the recommendation was for um, a couple different tiers of youth ambassadors. We really felt going to the local secondary schools and going to ADHS um, and having some youth civic en engagement on all our committees from people in there. Um, it could even count towards their volunteer hours for high school, but really we really value um, the contributions that our youth can give. They give a very unique perspective and they're really our up and coming leaders. Daryl spoke very, very strongly about our empire is a town, you know, for all ages. And we really want to make sure we promote that in, in getting our youth in, involved in this. So having them on committees is awesome. Um, we said outlining the expense coverages, including the ability to receive safe family benefits, uh, really speaks to that diverse candidate base where that might be, you know, that might be worth its weight in gold for someone that doesn't have benefits at all right now in their job. Um, they may really, really be attracted to the role just for a key yeah. thing like that. Uh, and then we said proactively approach citizen members on town advisory committees. Uh, this draws from an established pool of civic-minded leaders in the community. And I think it's fair to say our citizen members on town advisory committees, it, we have a very diverse uh, group of people now that sit on our committees. So it would really tap into kind of giving a nod to what Maureen said about how um, it's a civic-minded responsibility to run for council. Well, we already have people that are doing it right now 
for nothing <laughs> that are willing to put through put forth a lot of uh, time and effort in doing it and we'd love to be able to see those kind of people run for it so even having the chair of committees reach out to their citizen members and say hey have you thought of running for council <laughs> would be um would be a really valuable thing I think I'm running the other way, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> Come on by, Andy. <laughs> by Andy. Can I just make a, just a couple of comments on, on Absolutely. This? I think it's, you know, some really good ideas. I think, you know, from a staff perspective, we're really working on our communication strategy this year and the outreach campaign for the, um, for, for people to be involved in council is going to be a big part of that. Um, and, and I think your first point and then your, your third point about uh, family benefits and what's involved in being a counselor at all is part of that package of information that we'll try to, um, to make sure through, uh, through the elections uh, clerk, um, Maureen, uh, that we are providing good information to the public about what's involved and, and uh, how to be involved. That's great. Youth ambassadors, I agree. And I think council has done a really good job. Uh, particularly over the last term or two of, uh, of engaging the youth and, and getting them on those committees is so important. Um, and I think as part of our outreach campaign, um, you know, as, as those members get into that voting age, we should be making sure that they're aware of what an election means and, and what those roles could be. The last one, I just have a little, um, and, and you kind of hit on it, Chris, maybe it's the chairs of the committees that can reach out to people, but, you know, my question sort of was, who's this a recommendation for? Because as a staff person, you know, we have to be very bipartisan and, and very careful about, you know, um, giving the impression that we're encouraging anyone, uh, you know, specifically to run as opposed to we encourage everyone to give consideration to running. So, you know, just that, just a little bit around that, who, who could be, who could be doing that, who should be doing that. Um, that's a, that's a good point. I, I think mm -hmm. we might ex we could expand that and just say it is for um, the the chairs to make sure that citizen members not only know about being on council, but also it, it might not be the citizen members that actually run for it, but those are the people that may be able to spread the word. So um, maybe thinking I, I agree with you that we have to make sure that town is not looked at as cultivating certain candidates as coming in. Um, but I just want I, I want to harness that value of having um, the citizen members as your most engaged people, even if they're encouraging other people to run on council and spreading the word. Uh, I think that's more where we were going with that, too. I think if, if I can add on this, I'm, I've been doing some evaluation of governance projects in a number of countries, um, particularly fragile states. But one of the issues to strengthen municipal governance is called citizen engagement. And strategic public communication is the tool that is used to foster citizen engagement. And the better your citizen engagement process works, the more legitimate the institution is perceived by the public, and the more the public feels a sense of ownership and responsibility to do what they can to make the institution work properly. So I think these comments here are in that light, but I think you could actually go a little stronger on that. Um, and uh, if you had something like a strategic public communication exercise to foster citizen engagement in, in the affairs of, of municipal governance, you know, I'm, uh, I probably should have had this uh, aired before you wrote this, Chris, but uh, <laughs> this is the kind of thing that I think you're, you're talking about, Robin. Uh, it, it's really important because in an area, it's, it's the foundation of democracy, really. Uh, and it's, it's really important to, to be proactive on this, that the institution should make, sh do what they can to foster the, the, a, a relationship between themselves and the citizens they serve uh, in some kind of creative and, and uh, uh, directed way. And then not be unhappy if what the citizens say is not what the administration expects but this is part of democracy absolutely so i'm just making a note right daryl did you have any comments on this no i nope. totally agree with it guys uh, yeah no comment at all perfect i was gonna say i like that you you labeled it additional recommendations because i think kind of what i, I kind of said at the start there is you know what I mean because the mandate for the committee was to do a market review of compensation um you know what I mean these things are really are kind of additional so then council can really see here's the compensation then here's the additional recommendations the committee has come up with through the process perfect, perfect. 
Is that the, oh, that's the last slide. Oh, there we go. <laughs> that's the end of it. Perfect. So, well, that's great. I think we definitely took away some great comments there. Um, I think what we'll do is we'll edit up some of the key points in here. Um, we don't have a date yet to present to council, but you said, I, I know we want to do it sooner rather than later uh, in there, but what kind of uh, timeline are we looking at for our presentation to council? The next, uh, the next available meeting is January 24th. And I, okay. I look to the clerk to see how heavy she's feeling the agenda is at this point, but I'm, I'm sensing it's... Uh, we have a couple of public meetings that night, yeah, Robin. Yeah. yeah. But, but uh, certainly can put it on if, if you so wish. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I think it's important that we do it uh, mm -hmm. sooner than later, right, Robin? Yeah, yeah I agree. Okay, would you like it on the Janu January 24th? If we have room in there, I'm... I'm open to that. Yeah. yeah, I'm. I'm. I'm open. My schedule's pretty free. Uh, so, Chris, you're the you're the guy with the job and and a class <laughs> and, a, and a room full of eight year olds or seven year olds to try to corral five year olds. Five year olds. Five year olds. <laughs> oh, Four five year olds. We're all online though, so it's okay. It's it's okay. Um, so yeah, Jane, we'll pencil that down then for January 24th for the presentation. Um, Andy and Daryl, I think what we'll do is we'll just uh, tighten up some of the, the, the language in there. Um, we'll go over that. And, uh, and yeah, any other comments, any other questions that we have? Are you, are you staff, are you comfortable with the general drift of what we've been doing? Yeah, no, I think you've done a great job and I, I really appreciate how much time this takes. Um, and how much effort and and uh, the thought that you've put into it that's that's really encouraging. We appreciate that. Yeah. Uh, well, you oh, guys provided us with uh, with with the data that we could work with too. So, I think it's a it's a job that has many hands that uh, that pulled on that rope. I was just going to say, our role is to give you the data that you needed. So, you know, by all means, when you, even when you're tightening things up here, Chris, if you need anything else, just let us know. We're happy to provide any data that you need. Fantastic. And you've done that right from the start too, Jennifer. You've provided the, you've provided everything to us, so we really appreciate that as well. Yeah, and we I appreciate that. Uh, I think Maureen was waving a hand there. Maureen? No, no, <laughs> I'm not waving. She was telling us, "Go away! Stop! Stop yeah. talking!" <laughs> Maybe she's yawning, right? Yeah. No. no, I'm thinking it's an election year, and we've got some work to do ahead of us. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. Um, I think, it, and I thank Andy and Daryl, and uh, thank you, Jennifer, and Maureen, Rob, and Evelyn for this too. Um, I, I know it is a difficult task taking complex data and handing it over to citizen members because we really are we're citizen members. We're not um, we're not experts by any means. So uh, we do rely on the feedback and we rely on your impressions on the, the stuff that we've given you um, to kind of craft our recommendation to council. So thank you very much for for your help in doing this. Yeah, but just a comment, to, uh, Chris. Go ahead. Sorry, Daryl. Uh, Daryl uh, first, Andy. Yeah. No. I, oh, I was just going to say that uh, that. Um, oh hell, Andy, go ahead. I forgot what I was going to say. I'm sorry, I threw you off track there, Daryl. I'm sorry about that. It doesn't take much, Andy. Believe me. Uh, um, one of the things that in these additional recommendations, one of the other things that uh, some of us have been working on is this information package, this welcome initiative. Um, that uh, is, is also percolating along on a parallel track. And uh, the, these other additional recommendations would go, would fit nicely into, you know, how your town council works, uh, how the electoral process works and things like that. So there's a, there's a, there's a crossover effect uh, that, uh, that we, uh, might, might be worthwhile there. We are not putting anything more in the presentation though, Andy. That's, that's <laughs> it. No, no, no. I'm just <laughs> suggesting that this other task absolutely uh draw from this line of this line of action yeah. go ahead daryl do you remember yeah yes i do <laughs> you were just giving it additional thought i appreciate no, it i was just i just wanted to point out to robin and uh, jennifer in particular that we took this role very very seriously okay and the reason we did because we feel that we are representing uh the citizens of arm prior or the community of Arm Prior with these recommendations. So, um, so that's why we've taken a, we've spent a lot of time and effort on, on, to, on this particular role. I appreciate that. I just want you to know that. 
Yeah. Uh, as with everything you do, Daryl. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, it's it's I, a bounty to be able to be of service. Thank you for the invitation. Right. And Kayla, I'm sorry, I forgot to thank you as well in there. I, I, I looked around the room, but Kayla, you, you're fantastic as well. But you know that, you know that. I didn't have to say that. <laughs> All good. So I think that is about it. We can uh, motion to uh, adjourn. Do we have a mover? Yep. Daryl and Andy is our seconder. And I think that is it for the evening. We're all good. Thank you very much for your time, guys. Really oh, appreciate thank it. You. Thank great. you for giving us a chance. Yeah, no thanks, problem. everyone. Have a great <laughs> evening. Night. Take care. Goodbye. Thanks. Bye. -bye. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye.